Buongiorno a tutti. Eh, parliamo questa mattina di un argomento. Good morning. Uh, today we're going to talk about uh, a very particular topic, uh, which is uh, prescription and uh, the use of glasses in childhood. So, the use of uh, glasses in pediatric age. The idea is to create a sort of uh, um, symbiosis between the child and uh, uh, his glasses. Well, by the way, I'd like to introduce myself. I'm Gianni Amerio. I'm an ophthalmologist. Flavia Fabiani is also an ophthalmologist. Cinzia Benici, optometrist. And Matilde Ronzoni from Hoya, whom uh, we would like to thank for organizing this uh, uh, session. Again, the peculiarity of uh, glasses in uh, pediatric age is what I'm going to talk about. So, glasses in childhood are different from the use of glasses in adulthood. Well, in uh, one hour we cannot go into the details of this uh, topic. I just, uh, I will just uh, hint at uh, specific elements. As I was saying, the use of glasses in childhood is different uh, from that uh, during adulthood. So the path from prescription to the use uh, is a sort of a circular, synergetic uh, path. More than in any other field, uh, uh, there must be a synergy among the different uh, uh, people involved in this process. We all know that uh, uh, this is uh, not uh, the right venue to talk about uh, the different criticalities and issues in this respect. But as I said, I just would like to uh, give you some insights and inputs uh, for uh, uh, concerning this topic. There is a say, uh, saying that uh, so before you uh, judge a person, you should uh, uh, put yourself in his shoes. And this is what we're going to make today. In uh, our speeches, uh, we will try and consider the viewpoint of the other person in order to try and see what the approach should be and what measures should be taken in this respect. Let me start with my presentation. The topic of my presentation, as you can read, is the correction of refractive defects in pediatric age from the viewpoint of an ophthalmologist. Let's say that uh, there is a major element uh, that uh, uh, makes a diff that makes the difference between prescribing glasses to children and to adults. For adults, uh, glasses aim at uh, correcting or reducing the symptoms uh, of the patient uh, that is uh, oh, the fact of uh, having eye strain or not being able to see. However, in children uh, there is another topic which is extremely important, which is the therapeutic goal. In children uh, we have situations like amblyopia and strabism and for this reason uh, glasses uh, are not only to allow children to see in a better way but also to correct uh, the defect. So glasses are to be considered as a medical therapeutic device. How can we identify a refractive defect in childhood? In this respect, we have some differences too compared to uh, what we can see uh, in adults. Today, in uh, uh, children, in order to identify refractive uh, uh, defects in children, we use uh, scleroscopy, uh, which is, uh, uh, in a way, a sort of uh, art, but uh, it should not be considered uh, in uh, absolute terms only. Skyoscopia should just allow us uh, to identify what kind of defect uh, the, child, uh, the child is suffering from, and uh, this allows us uh, to uh, avoid mistakes uh, upon, during prescription. Well, this examination, and I'm not going into the details of it um, because this is not uh, the right uh, session, well, this examination can be uh, performed in uh, uh, different uh, uh, ways, uh, meiosis, for example, allowing to identify defects uh, simultaneously in both uh, um, eyes uh, and then autorefractometry compared to adults uh, well in adults uh, it is usually performed uh, 
uh, with the monocular uh, method and uh, um, but in uh, the pediatric age especially in younger children new devices uh, are now uh, becoming increasingly widespread uh, such as binocular devices that are very often used for children because they allow to simultaneously see both eyes and uh, hence uh, we can identify what is uh, the most important element in paediatric age, uh, which is the difference between uh, both eyes. Uh, one of the main uh, causes uh, of uh, amblyopia is uh, anisometry, uh, which is the difference between the two eyes. And uh, <coughs> what are we what can we see and what can we measure through the examination, visual acuity, the refractive defect, and this is what we traditionally uh, do also for adults. In children, however, there are also other uh, elements that we assess, ocular motility, binocularity and astenopia. In children, as we will see, it is not just a refraction that uh, guides us in prescribing a pair of glasses, but also these other elements. In, a prescription, in the prescription, we also have to consider certain parameters that make a prescription even more difficult. Age, for example, so there is a physiological hyperopia um, that uh, uh, is reduced uh, as the child grows up. There is also an issue with the entity, with the magnitude of, conne of correction for ch children sometimes and need uh, full correction for the aforementioned reasons. And uh, very often uh, children tend to accept uh, full corrections uh, uh, in a much better way. Well, both uh, the right and the wrong uh, full corrections, actually, but this is another story. Binocularity is also important uh, for penalization because uh, the penalization with filters or occlusion is a sort of uh, uh, drug, and uh, like any drug, uh, uh, it has uh, some side effects, uh, so it may. Uh, disrupt uh, uh, binocularity and so we have to take into consideration different forms of uh, penalization. Anisometropy, as we said, is one of the main causes of amblyopia and uh, uh, also other factors uh, such as astenopia. Astenopia uh, not always depend uh, on eyes but also on other medical factors uh, that, uh, has to be, that have to be taken into account. Well, if we focus on the different uh, refractive defects, uh, myopia is uh, the defect uh, that is uh, uh, the least concerning for us. Uh, um, well, uh, we should also consider that uh, children uh, tend to uh, focus on the near vision and so we should not exceed in correcting um, but wait until uh, they go to school because there uh, also the far vision is important and uh, uh, checks uh, uh, and examinations have to be relatively frequent, uh, frequently because myopia may change quite uh, quickly. Hyperopia, in this case too, we can distinguish between the preschool and the school age. In the preschool age we have, as I said, physiological hyperopia and eye strain or converging strabism that require, in these cases, a full correction also in school. In, during the school age, full correction has to be provided. Uh, in case of uh, astenopia, but in the absence of these uh, uh, issues, uh, we may also avoid uh, uh, full correction and resort uh, to an uh, undercorrection. And this is uh, something which is uh, uh, usually performed uh, because in the real world, uh, where children uh, do not always wear glasses, uh, if we prescribe a full correction uh, and the child uh, wear, uh, wears glasses and cannot see very well, uh, well then he will uh, uh, avoid using glasses. And so we have to pay attention uh, while correcting hyperop hyperopia. 
then uh, astigmatism. Well, uh, together with uh, azinometropy, in this case it is uh, much easier to have uh, and to develop uh, lazy eyes uh, uh, and uh, amblyopia. So we have to pay attention because if we're not able to correct uh, this defect uh, during the preschool age, uh, this problem uh, will become worse uh, during the school age. And uh, we also have to pay attention to mild uh, astigmatisms uh, that uh, can lead uh, to uh, difficulties while reading. Writing uh, is uh, uh, usually uh, vertical uh, in terms of uh, uh, the structure of the letters, and so uh, mild astigmatism may be a problem. In conclusion, the last uh, refractive uh, defect I'd like to talk about uh, is uh, anisometropy, uh, which uh, implies a risk of binocularity, and for this reason uh, it has to be corrected at an early age, uh, especially uh, paying attention to astigmatic uh, anisometropy. In conclusion, as I said before, uh, we cannot uh, provide a comprehensive picture in just uh, 15 minutes. However, uh, prescribing glasses uh, to children requires uh, many different factors uh, uh, that uh, have to be uh, fine-tuned uh, based on our experience and based on uh, our track record. Uh, the prerequisite uh, uh, in the pediatric age is to develop a sort of uh, good relationship with a child, uh, a quiet environment, uh, and uh, um, so we also have to be relatively quick because uh, uh, children uh, tend to remain concentrated uh, for a very short uh, period of time. And now I'd like to hand over to Flavia Fabiani, who will talk about glasses and contact lenses in pediatric age as a therapeutic and rehabilitating device. Good morning. Can we start? Well, uh, first of all, I would like uh, to thank you for inviting me here today. I'm uh, very uh, aware of these uh, issues uh, because I work uh, a lot with children. And I, uh, we must say that uh, when dealing with glasses and contact lenses uh, in pediatric age, we have to consider that uh, new technologies, uh, innovative models, uh, last generation materials uh, and the new technical and scientific approaches uh, well, uh, allow us uh, as ophthalmologists uh, to be uh, much more involved uh, because uh, all these novelties uh, can allow us to bet, uh, better fulfill our children's needs. These new technologies, uh, by the way, uh, provide a great support uh, uh, to uh, rehabilitation and uh, to therapy as a whole. But let's have a look at uh, the topic. Glasses in the pediatric age is really uh, uh, in, uh, an important uh, instrument, uh, which is not uh, that obvious. If we go back uh, uh, to history, Seneca, when he used to teach to his uh, students, uh, had them use a concave mirror that provided magnification, especially from far. And uh, he also used uh, a multifaceted uh, glass uh, surface uh, that had a prismatic uh, effect, uh, also because he suffered uh, from diplopia. Nero, when he used uh, to uh, watch the games, uh, he used uh, an emerald uh, lens, uh, a cut emerald uh, lens, uh, that uh, had uh, a filtering uh, effect, uh, a relaxing effect. Uh, so back in history, the, the conditions were already in place uh, to highlight the importance of lenses. And uh, so today we have a completely different situation. In the 16th century, glasses uh, used to have a very thick uh, uh, glasses and very thick uh, temples. Uh, nowadays uh, we have glasses uh, that uh, have to be fashionable and uh, have to correct. Uh, they have to be safe uh, without any sharp edges, uh, they have to be comfortable to have a good fit, uh, lightweight and stable, they have to be resistant, uh, flexible and the look uh, is also important, uh, aesthetics is also important. Uh, 
because glasses in children should not be considered as a penalty. So glasses in the pediatric age from the very beginning to prescription implies a different steps. Our colleague Mario already mentioned the importance of the assessment of uh, cyclopedic refraction, uh, auto refractometry, well, for babies in neonatal uh, children uh, after surgery, even anesthesia can be important in order to provide uh, proper uh, refraction. And then timing is also important. Diagnosis should be as early as possible and correction as well because a good correction can also lead to a good psychomotor development of the child. We often see children who are very shy, who look down and uh, who uh, do not communicate uh, very much and then we find out uh, that uh, he's uh, uh, nearsighted and uh, with glasses uh, the situation changes dramatically. Indications are myopia, hyperopia, astigmatism, amblyopia, strabism and the different types of glasses. Most importantly, the management of children is really paramount. Both the child, the family and the school must be involved in the management process. It is extremely important that during school and at school, a child can benefit from proper correction and this correction is maintained throughout the day. And then the importance of follow-up. Let's think about a strabism, accommodative strabism that require the use of permanent lenses for many years until the site is fully developed. Now, when we have to tackle the issue of contact lenses in pediatric age, we are often confronted with a reverse trend. In the past, the application of contact lenses were used, uh, was used for aphatic children. Technical options were very few. Today, however, we know the physiopathology of the, tear, of the tear film in a much better way. We have biocompatible materials. There is a, a much greater healthcare awareness, and there are also a very uh, well. Uh, uh, there are many uh, campaigns, uh, such as uh, the Lions campaign, site uh, for kids that can help uh, uh, institute uh, diagnostic tests at an early age. So contact lenses in the pediatric age require attitude, well the uh, attitude of parents and also maturity. A seven-year-old uh, child is able to perfectly manage uh, his or her own lens, contact lens, uh, both as far as application and uh, as far as maintenance is concerned. Our objectives are therefore comfort, easy of view, ease of use, a visual spatial relationship, zero impact on the cornea and also the importance of timing. First of all, a basic assessment of the tear of the lacrimal film has to be performed, then an assessment of the corneal parameters, the power of the contact lens and indications, therapeutic indications in refractive anomalies such as ametropies and anisometropies, severe myopia and low vision, for example albinism and aridinia. Rehabilitation, well, in case of uh, anisometropic amblyopia, uh, pediatric aphakia, and uh, uh, accommodation, and nystagmus. In case of a severe uh, child uh, myopia, which uh, is uh, generally um, hereditary, uh, we have a different uh, variables, uh, stability, progression and even regression during pediatric age. 
for this reason, it is extremely important uh, to properly correct uh, the defect uh, through contact lenses, thus reducing amblyopia and providing a much better <laughs> optical quality of the images uh, because uh, the because vision develops uh, especially during the very first uh, years of age. You also obtain better attention and a reduction of the symptoms uh, such as headache, for example, or uh, the uh, uh, um, laziness of children. Aesthetics uh, plays, uh, of course, a very important uh, role. And as far as uh, myopic progression is concerned, data are still controversial. Well, as far as uh, types, uh, uh, the different types of uh, uh, contact lenses are concerned, we have contact lenses with a com complete correction at an early stage. In case of uh, high anisomyopia and amblyopia, you have to balance the quality of the images and reduce aberration. It is relatively rare, but uh, we have a deep amblyopia, and for this reason, it is important to and possible to correct high myopia and, for example, occlude the uh, better eye. In uh, surgical aphakia, the objective is that of uh, correcting hyperopia, eliminating azinometropy, especially in the monolateral forms, uh, reducing distortions and aberrations, uh, and uh, correcting uh, the uh, residual refraction if there is an implant. Uh, intraocular implants uh, have grown uh, uh, recently, but there are still cases uh, uh, when uh, children uh, are made uh, aphakic. Our goal, therefore, is that of uh, increasing visual acuity, the vision quality, with a reduction of magnification and a better peripheral vision, a reduction of the prismatic effect, but most of all, an, as an auto-perception of one's own appearance and an improvement in social integration. There are corneal parameters with tables that help us identifying the corneal topography and, of course, refraction. How to apply contact lenses? Uh, this is very important uh, and this is a, dif uh, a difference compared to adult uh, adults. Uh, so you have to take the lid uh, and raise it. Uh, the lower lid uh, is uh, uh, lowered uh, with a finger and then uh, so this is how contact lenses are applied. We have to consider that a correction has to be performed both with a surgical aphakia and a pseudo aphakia. This is a follow up, and this is very important. Preventive checks are paramount because, in some cases, there are deposits on the surface and it is difficult to identify symptoms in children. Uh, family training is important uh, because uh, complications may range uh, from uh, uh, corneal suffering, uh, frequent loss, uh, rupture of uh, the contact lens uh, with uh, corneal abrasions, uh, etc. In albinism and uh, aridemia, it is important uh, to take into account uh, that contact lenses may mitigate uh, um, visual problems, uh, reduce nystagmus and photophobia, and improve uh, the quality of vision. So, in conclusion, uh, new materials and uh, new geometries uh, are broadening up uh, the field of application of contact lenses. Uh, we have uh, uh, significant improvement uh, of, uh, in terms of performance and visual quality, and by that I mean uh, depth, uh, contrast, accommodation and peripheral vision. The collaboration between ophthalmologists, uh, parents and contactologists is really necessary for the benefit of our children. Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Dr. Fabiani, for this exhaustive, even if brief, uh, speech. I'd like to give the floor to Cinzia Binnici. We said before we, we should have uh, uh, good collaboration between the child uh, and symbiosis uh, between the child and uh, uh, the eyeglasses, and uh, Cinzia will speak about it. Good morning, everybody. I am uh, Cinzia uh, Benici. I'm an optometrist, and uh, uh, just like a child would say, I'm extremely glad to see to be here.
questa, sapete cos'è? Questa è la... Today I have this. This is the scarf that gra my grandmother gave me so many years ago and uh, till the end of my days uh, I want to keep it. It doesn't uh, just protect me against uh, uh, cold weather but it makes me happy, it reassures me. It's the same identical feelings I'd like a child to feel when the child wears uh, uh, eyeglasses or contact lenses. Be happy. Buffa e felice. Mi ha detto una bambina. Ugly and beautiful. A girl told me when she wore her first uh, eyeglasses. How did we get to this expression? With symbiosis. That's how I see symbiosis. Uh, it's a communication triad uh, between parent, uh, optometrist, uh, and uh, converging on the child, uh, on the child's needs. Uh, uh, the prince, princess is at home. Inside uh, uh, this uh, communication triad, uh, I identify whatever uh, uh, is to the visual benefit of the child. When a parent uh, uh, gives me uh, the prescription uh, of uh, uh, their children, uh, uh, they open uh, a door to anxiety and fears uh, uh, for uh, the uh, small child uh, that uh, should wear contact lenses. The first thing I do is to listen and uh, try to be in my shoes and uh, you will uh, understand me. I uh, do not want uh, uh, to dismiss uh, uh, the feelings of parents uh, but uh, I try and make it acceptable and pleasurable uh, uh, the idea that uh, their child uh, will wear contact lenses. Uh, how? By just speaking about positive effects, enhancing positive effects. Uh, th th there will be a, a, a visual benefit, not only, also the quality of life for their child. But uh, while I speak with children, don't forget uh, that there's a child that cannot stand still. He wants to go home. He wants to play many other things uh, to consider. So what should we do? We make the child play. We involve the child in a game. A game where he's the protagonist uh, with his aesthetic preferences, his personality, and whatever he wants to tell us. And how do I involve the child in a game? While I speak about ophthalmic lenses uh, with the parents, I give the child uh, a sample of ophthalmic lens uh, to test uh, 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 the concept uh, uh, of uh, a, a treatment, uh, how uh, a photochromatic lens becomes dark uh, and uh, the fact that it doesn't uh, uh, break. When I speak about geometry, materials, uh, application protocol uh, uh, for the parents, I give a contact uh, lens to the child uh, so that uh, the child gets familiarity with the contact lens. The contact lens is not something foreign. Uh, 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 it should become uh, something just like the scarf to me. And uh, with regard uh, to the frame, uh, here things, uh, from my perspective, uh, are a bit more complex. It's a game of balance between what parents uh, uh, and uh, uh, the child want and uh, the functionality of the eyeglasses. It's so important uh, 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 that I should immediately explain. Uh, uh, I should immediately explain parents uh, that when uh, uh, you uh, uh, look at the world uh, from the bottom to the top, uh, uh, the frame uh, should always be well centered. If the frame goes down, and I'm quite extreme with parents, the child will have 
uh, an, an inadequate uh, uh, gaze line, uh, 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 vision line. He won't see well, he won't have visual benefit, but he won't say so because uh, they told me it is, they told him it is right just like that, and it is not so. And we should stress this point. Uh, uh, the frame should always be well centered, and uh, uh, the size of the frame should be adequate for uh, the uh, uh, child's face. Uh, HD vision, OK. With regards uh, to materials, uh, lightweight, uh, uh, hypoallergenic, uh, non-toxic, uh, they can choose, however, the colors they want, the favorite uh, shapes when the child becomes uh, 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 well, uh, more an adolescent, uh, it, it is usually rounded. It, it's preferable to use a metal frame uh, because when the child uh, plays, uh, there's no risk that the child gets injured. When I give a final uh, eyeglasses or contact lenses, I say something simple, uh, which is quite relevant. Uh, Let's don't get lose sight of one another. I do care about you, but I do really care. And uh, uh, just like uh, uh, Dr. Amelio said before, the eye doctor, correct me if I'm wrong, uh, sees the child once a year. Is it right, doctor? Many times, yes. Uh, 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 sometimes it's not the objective, but for a certain number of reasons, it is so. so who sees the child uh, the most? We. And uh, we should uh, communicate uh, the fact that we want uh, to uh, meet the child again, not just because uh, 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 the temple uh, is not uh, right, uh, uh, but we also know if the child and the parents are satisfied and happy. And with regard to contact lenses, uh, I uh, give parents uh, a written program uh, with the dates of uh, uh, checks. And uh, I invite parents uh, to come because prevention is better than cure. In all of this, I never lose sight of the child and I tell him, come and meet me soon and uh, you will find a surprise and be reassured that uh, the child uh, keeps on asking uh, parents uh, uh, to come and see me because they want the surprise. And I will end with a concept uh, that will be explained by uh, Dr. Ranzoni. And uh, uh, small is not a synonym for less. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. We have spoken about uh, uh, visual problems in pediatric age, uh, vision problems. We have talked about uh, uh, the relationship between the child and uh, uh, vision correction, and uh, let's uh, see the characteristics of the vision correction. I give the floor to Matilde Ranzoni. Thank you so much. I'm Matilde Ranzoni, optometrist and uh, product specialist uh, Hoya. The reason I'm here with you today is uh, to get into details uh, of uh, visual solutions. Uh, we have talked about uh, vision-related problems, how to timely correct them, uh, the adequate tests uh, to perform, uh, and uh, checks uh, with the uh, eye doctor and uh, uh, keeping a relationship uh, with the parents and with the child. But let's now speak about uh, the importance of the solution. Uh, I see many students uh, in the audience. Uh, to give you an idea, Hoya is a company that manufactures ophthalmic lenses. It's uh, uh, mm, uh, lenses for uh, eye eyeglasses, not contact lenses, but you have manifold uh, solutions uh, for children, ophthalmic lenses, uh, contact lenses, it depends on so many factors. Sometimes it's better one solution than the other, sometimes uh, they are equal. Let's uh, speak about uh, uh, eyeglass lenses in pediatric age. Just like my colleagues uh, told you, I identify two important points. Uh, first of all, uh, uh, visual efficiency and uh, for correct growth and for, for correct uh, development, uh, it's important uh, 
to have uh, regular um, vision examinations uh, that are important periods uh, when to receive a specific uh, examinations, especially because uh, in the first year of life, uh, uh, sight uh, and uh, uh, also uh, uh, hearing uh, are uh, extremely developed. and. Uh, uh, vision is one of the most important uh, senses, uh, and especially because uh, non-correct uh, development uh, of uh, vision may have an impact on the learning ability of a child uh, or create uh, difficulties uh, in uh, uh, socialization of the child. Uh, and uh, for sure, uh, 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 visual efficiency is the first step. Once uh, we have assessed it, uh, it's important to also provide uh, the right uh, uh, correction. Uh, and. Uh, I may decide that the child is short-sighted, far-sighted, far-sighted, or whatever, but then the visual solution should meet the expectations. You shouldn't underestimate the importance of the lens offered, be it ophthalmic or contact lens. For sure, it's important to choose a material that may be in line uh, with the needs and the lifestyle of uh, uh, children, because uh, in uh, uh, adolescence uh, uh, and childhood, uh, children have completely different lifestyles than adults. It's important uh, to provide a lens uh, and the right type of frame in line with the dynamic lifestyle of a child. We know that children run, and uh, uh, for sure, they uh, pay less attention uh, uh, to a possible risk uh, uh, of uh, uh, a frame that breaks. And uh, on the other hand, there is an important aspect. Uh, the choice of the material is important uh, 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 for uh, the eyes of children, uh, and uh, the eyes of children are less developed. Uh, they have a protective system uh, that isn't uh, fully developed, uh, and uh, so uh, the solution uh, should also uh, uh, give higher degree of protection. Uh, and specifically, if you take a look at this image, uh, you can see how the interaction of light uh, with the eye of a child uh, uh, varies uh, compared uh, to the interaction uh, in uh, uh, the adult eye. And in the case of the adult, uh, you already have a, a protection mechanism uh, uh, also given by the aging of the eye structures uh, themselves, not for the eye of the chain, but child. Uh, visible UVA, UVB light uh, gets to the retina in a different way than in adults. Uh, UVA, uh, uh, against which uh, we should protect uh, the most. Uh, it gets to the retina in adult uh, uh, eyes, uh, it gets to the retina in a lower percentage, uh, and uh, since childhood uh, you should get protection against the uh, UV, uh, but also blue light. And I'd like to get into detail of a material offered by Hoya PNX. Uh, it's a material for the construction of lenses. You know that ophthalmic lenses uh, can be created uh, with different materials, uh, uh, 1, 5, 3, 1, 7, 4, and so on and so forth. Uh, each material has got its own properties in terms of protection, uh, impact resistance, uh, thinness, uh, and optical transparency. In this case, uh, we, call, uh, we speak about PNX, uh, because uh, PNX for Hoya is uh, the most uh, uh, shock-resistant material. And, uh, uh, when, uh, and uh, uh, you need correction for children. Why? Because it has four properties. It's thin, it's lightweight, it goes hand in hand, optical transparency, impact resistance, and UV protection uh, that is important for children. Lightweight uh, uh, and thin. It's an important parameter. It goes hand in hand uh, with the choice of the frame. Uh, and uh, 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 frame should be comfortable and lightweight for children, uh, just like uh, the material that 
comes with the phrase frame so that uh, the child uh, can wear uh, uh, the eyeglasses uh, 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 comfortably. And optical transparency, it's important to have a lens uh, that offers a uh, 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 neat vision and uh, also anti-reflective uh, treatment uh, uh, this is fundamental because uh, it reduces uh, uh, reflexes uh, caused by the lens itself. Uh, the more I reduce uh, such reflexes, uh, the more the optical transparency of the lens uh, and uh, uh, impact uh, resistance uh, because we've seen uh, children have a dynamic uh, lifestyle and so children uh, are more uh, 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 prone uh, and subject uh, to breaking uh, 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 eyeglasses uh, and UV protection because uh, the structures of the eye of a child uh, are more vulnerable. With regard uh, to impact uh, resistance, I show you the difference uh, compared uh, to a standard material, CR, it's 1.5, it's the standard uh, material that sells the most, but uh, we shall see that PNX uh, has additional properties uh, and uh, especially in the case of impact uh, resistance. This is a test uh, uh, performed uh, for all the lenses. It's an international test, uh, uh, not just used by Hoya. And uh, a 16 gram, uh, uh, 127 centimeter ball uh, from one meter uh, uh, falls uh, onto the lens. As you can see from the first image, uh, the PNX material after the test has no sign. Uh, the CR material has a scratch, not a crack. The test is uh, passed when the material doesn't break. Both materials don't break, uh, but as you can see, CR has signs on the lens, scratches. And, uh, to test uh, uh, PNX uh, resistance, uh, we increase the weight of the uh, steel sphere that falls against uh, the lens. Uh, 95 grams and 1 kilogram, a considerable weight. 95 grams and 1 kilogram. Uh, the PNX material doesn't break, but it has a slight uh, sign on the material that uh, uh, you uh, cannot uh, uh, perceive. and. Uh, the CR material breaks, and thanks to such tests, uh, the PNX material is 60 times uh, uh, m more resistant uh, to impact uh, than standard material. It's so important for children. And then, uh, in this table, you have a comparison between standard uh, materials and uh, 153, uh, and all the parameters you analyze uh, for uh, uh, material, UV, uh, ray protection. PNX offers 100% uh, protection, uh, UV protection, uh, uh, rays uh, coming from uh, uh, frontal surface. Uh, you see the cut of the material gets uh, to 395 nanometers, uh, uh, and uh, so protection is higher. Uh, uh, and a standard material gets uh, to 330 nanometers. In the case of UVA, it protects uh, uh, 87%. I don't have full protection. Something else. Uh, heat resistance of such materials and solvent uh, resistance. Uh, another fundamental property is the ability to uh, have this solvent uh, resistance. Uh, if you use uh, solvent of any kind, uh, this type of, of material has big resistance also from this perspective. Another important concept uh, uh, is double protection. Uh, and uh, by double protection, uh, we mean protection against the uh, UV rays, uh, and not only, also protection against the blue light. Uh, just like uh, some of my colleagues uh, said, uh, during uh, school age, uh, many things have changed. So we have electronic uh, boards, uh, tablets are used uh, to study. You are exposed uh, to an artificial and less natural source of light. And uh, also in the case of children, uh, it's important, apart from choosing uh, uh, 
evolved materials 1, 5, 3, or also other indices that give me UV protection. And even if I have clear lens, I have 100% UV protection. However, it's important to also combine treatment against the blue light treatments uh, that uh, also reduce uh, blue light and give me a higher visual comfort, offering double protection against UV and light blue. I conclude with a campaign, a Hoya campaign, on all the uh, Hoya Center partners uh, that have this yearly program. Uh, it's important. It's not just a program lasting some months during uh, 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 but it's a program offered uh, all year round. And uh, it reassures uh, parents uh, in the uh, buying process. Uh, uh, um, uh, 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 and uh, frequent uh, uh, changes uh, are not uh, loved by parents. Uh, and uh, so this program uh, is aimed uh, uh, at uh, achieving this tar target uh, to provide uh, uh, spare eyeglasses uh, when you purchase uh, uh, eyeglasses, uh, to have a, a spare eyeglasses uh, um, uh, or uh, eyeglasses used uh, when children, for example, play or uh, uh, by 15 months uh, they can come back uh, uh, and uh, uh, they can buy uh, eyeglasses uh, with a special discount and uh, 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 we provide material protecting against uh, UV but also anti-reflective uh, treatment protecting against uh, UV uh, in the internal and also external surface and protection against the blue light. Uh, so frequent change um, of our eyeglasses offering, however, a highly evolved uh, product uh, meeting every type of requirement in terms of resistance and uh, UV blue light protection. Thank you so much. Thank you very much for this very interesting presentation. So we've seen that in the end, uh, glasses in pediatric age are small glasses, but connected with uh, many issues uh, that require a slightly different approach uh, compared uh, to adult glasses. And uh, we hope uh, uh, that the collaboration among the uh, many people involved in this process uh, can further grow. Uh, what is uh, really important is that uh, prescription is correct, uh, but uh, uh, even more importantly, children should like uh, the glasses they wear. And uh, glasses uh, should also have uh, specific features uh, so that uh, this device uh, can fully perform. So we have just a couple of uh, uh, minutes left uh, for questions, if you have any. My well, waiting for some questions uh, from the audience, uh, let me ask a question to Cinzia Benici. I have two questions, actually. First, what are the most important uh, moments uh, when selecting the right pair of glasses uh, or in choosing contact lenses? What are the main difficulties when communicating to parents, uh, to the family? And then uh, the second question, well, I'd like to point out uh, that uh, today children have a different lifestyle compared uh, to uh, many years ago. Many children uh, uh, do sports and uh, uh, so for this reason, uh, what can you suggest uh, to us uh, as an optometrist? Uh, what can we do uh, considering this uh, element? Regarding the, the first uh, question, uh, as I hinted at in my presentation, you asked uh, me about uh, the difficulties I'm confronted with when communicating with parents. Well, the uh, greatest difficulties are the parents' fears, uh, because, you know, children uh, 
when when they see that their parents are relaxed uh, and uh, uh, when they trust uh, the doctor, then uh, children are uh, willing to cooperate, uh, but parents are, have to be willing to cooperate as well. And what are the fears uh, that parents have as far as uh, contact lenses are concerned? Uh, manipulation is uh, the greatest issue for parents, uh, how to uh, treat the lens, uh, how to hold the lens, but I explain this uh, to them very well. When I start explaining that the application process, I explain this uh, really very well. The very first appointment that we fix, the very first meeting we have, is simply to know each other. Because I want the parents to share with me all their, all their concerns, all their doubts. Because if we do this up front, and if we try and find exhaustive answers to their questions, our application has no problems at all. However, if uh, during the application process there are any issues uh, or doubts from the parts of the parents, our application is much slower and uh, children are uh, uh, more, uh, less willing to cooperate. So first, you have to uh, reassure the parents that we are working for the visual well-being of children. Manipulation or the fact uh, that uh, uh, children may lose uh, contact lenses easily or what else can I say? Well, another fear that parents usually have is, uh, oh my God, if uh, they're playing and they fall, well, they may lose contact lenses. These are the typical questions they ask. But I can reassure them, uh, explaining that uh, um, there is a full application process to stick to. I will follow them step by step. Uh, they will be uh, provided with my mobile phone number so that uh, they can call me every time they need my help. And uh, as far as the second question is concerned, uh, children have a very dynamic life. Uh, they are lively, they're beautiful. And in this respect, there are many different solutions. There are glasses for sports, there are sports frames for those who cannot or are not willing to use contact lenses. Well, in this case, there are sports frames and sports glasses that are specifically designed to protect the eyes of the child uh, uh, and uh, uh, so that uh, they do not fall down when playing. And then, as uh, Ms. Ronzoni said, we also have unbreakable lenses uh, with uh, special treatments and coatings uh, so that uh, glasses are lightweight but at the same time also very practical and uh, functional. Thank you. Tutti timidi. No, adesso praticamente un attimino le sommi in attesa, sempre la speranza che io ho un'ultima domanda. Well, let me ask uh, uh, one last question. Well, we have three parties involved in communication, but not only three parts, because it is also important uh, to establish a dialogue among professionals. Uh, if we forget uh, and if we do not consider what uh, is happening at a general level and we focus on the local level, it is important to establish a dialogue, as I said, uh, at a local level. When prescribing pediatric glasses, uh, it is important that eye doctors uh, communicate uh, to the optician or optometrist uh, the reason for um, uh, prescribing uh, those, the, those glasses or those lenses because uh, sometimes they may seem strange uh, or unusual and also for feedback uh, reasons or if there are any doubts uh, uh, it is much more important uh, to share these doubts uh, to the doctor first uh, and uh, then to the parents because uh, if you generate uncertainty uh, within the parents uh, then you run the risk of uh, uh, damaging the whole process and this of course uh, goes to the detriment of the children. Uh, we shall not for, uh, forget that uh, um, in uh, children 
we often uh, um, aim at and focus on treating the children's defect and for this reason uh, priority should be given to correction in children. It's not easy, it's not an easy task because, uh, and this applies to all uh, sectors, because communication is always uh, difficult and uh, uh, creating a dialogue is always difficult, but uh, if we start uh, from the bottom up, uh, this is something we should uh, strive to uh, carry out. There is a question from the audience. Well, I'm a mother, so my question is, uh, which is the uh, favorable age uh, to uh, make the very first uh, eye visit, eye examination? Well, uh, there's no such um, a number. Uh, well, I could say uh, from age zero onwards. So, however, if there are no um, overt problems, uh, I think uh, uh, the first exam, the first visit uh, can be uh, organized uh, during the first uh, three years of age. But I must also say that not all eye doctors uh, are well equipped uh, uh, and uh, well prepared uh, to do so because you also need a specific instruments, uh, specific devices. Uh, but uh, the sooner the better, I would say. General, in, uh, generally, I would say uh, around uh, 3.5, 4 years of age. Well, this would be the best uh, moment because uh, uh, well uh, you get the best uh, situation to identify any problem uh, problems and correct them. Uh, well, uh, I also would like to add that the pediatrician has to follow up the child and uh, his or her healthcare status, and uh, well, he should also consider the family history. If both parents uh, are uh, myopic, for example, the child has up to 60% uh, likelihood to, is 60% likely to develop myopia. This has to be uh, communicated to the pediatrician, and the pediatrician will refer to the uh, eye doctor. There is another element uh, which is important, uh, and uh, this is what we said before. As eye doctors, uh, we're not always uh, uh, able to follow children uh, the way we would like to because of many reasons. And for this reason, uh, uh, the uh, people who are regularly in contact with children and with their parents uh, play a key role in this respect. A uh, trustworthy uh, uh, environment uh, should be uh, established uh, and uh, uh, so uh, pediatricians uh, should uh, advise and, uh, and recommend uh, uh, the, to the parents that they refer to an eye doctor. So much has to be done at a local level. Good. So if there are no further questions, uh, we can close uh, this uh, session and we hope uh, we've uh, given you some uh, uh, important insights and inputs. Uh,